uh, let me start. Okay, so again, as I was saying, uh, why use surface modeling when we can always use a solid model, right? Uh, it's because of two reasons. Let's say sometimes you're working with plastic designs or some molding designs where you don't know, need all the delicate informations, just the outer shell of the information. That's when you can create the surface, model, uh, surface models of different things. Let's say, for example, you're creating a car design, right? And it has so many information and detail, creating all the parts and assembling it, uh, even while you're showing it to someone, it's, it's going to take a while, right? So in, in that case, what we can do is always create the outer shell design with a surface model, model show it to whoever is interested, uh, and then when the final design has been selected, uh, we can just go from there. And it's easy to more, uh, design the outer side of it using uh, some type of sur surface design. By easy, I mean making small tweaks uh, instead of uh, going through the assembly, changing different parts of it. Uh, and now, once you have the surface, by the way, when you're cre creating a design in a CAD software for using for the surfaces, uh, they will not have any thickness. So before going to any production, you might have you have to add a thickness. Please look into the tutorials uh, that I posted. There should be all the information how to add thickness, how to use different tools on the surface uh, modeling. Okay, so. Also, I'll be uploading, uh, I've already uploaded, by the way, the, this uh, on the Blackboard. You can see some of the practice problems there. Uh, this is number one. This is number two. This is number three. So, uh, sorry, four. Yeah. So there are four of them, right, in total. And these are pretty straightforward. Just look into the details. And if you need help, the, the book is also mentioned, which book I've copied this problem from, right? So let's try to do one of the problems. Let's try to design this, um, I guess it's a hair dryer. Okay, so any questions before we start or anything in particular you wanna know about surface modeling or any questions? No, nothing so far. Okay, okay. So now, as always, what we do in the SOLIDWORKS, we will start with a part design because we're gonna design one of the parts, right? Okay. So I'm just gonna do a quick small change. Okay, so usually when you start SOLIDWORKS, what you will see is there is no information or no tab for the surfaces. Okay, um, you can always modify this as you like. Um, so right click on the feature tab here or somewhere around here and just click the tabs and you will see different other options. Uh, like if you were working with the surfaces, which we'll be doing this week. So. You can just select this, the tab will appear. Next week, we'll be working with the sheet metal. So you can just click that one and you know, so on and so forth. Depending on which one you're working with, we can just create this as is, okay? So as I as mentioned that we'll be working with surfaces, let's select the surface and you will see this tab appearing there. And that's it. That's why all we need, all the tools. Again, the tutorials has been posted on Blackboard. Just look into, go through those and you will see how to use them with individual examples. For, for now, what we are doing is we're gonna complete this one, right? So let's start with. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is uh, create this sketch. Now, as you can see from the original one, there is one, two, three, four, four different planes at work here, right? By four different planes, I mean, you will see different uh, arrangement of, um, of circles here that can be assigned from this sketch itself. This is the detailed sketch of this whole portion. So this is surface one, this is surface two, this is where the surface three is, as you can see for the, there is something here, and this is where surface four is, uh, the stops itself. And the details can be figured, figured out from this one. So uh, the first step I'm gonna do is create those surfaces or the plates itself. Okay, so let me make make it visible, the front plane, all right? And from this, we know that the first one is 75 millimeters away, the ne next one is 50, and the next one is 50, all right? So I'm gonna select this plane, go to the sketch, uh, sorry, feature button, and from there, the reference, and then select the plane. Okay, the first one is 75, okay? Now the next one is 50, 
and the next one is again 50. So it's going to be pretty straightforward from there. 50, and then again 50. Okay. So these are the ones we need. Um, just for the sake of uh, uh, visualization, I'm going to select the other ones that are not visible, right click on it, and make them visible. Okay. So that way we will have uh, everything together. And if you notice, as I extended this once, Solvers also created those some uh, virtual line. They're not the real line, but some virtual line on the other intersection. So it will give us a good visualization on how we want to do some things, right? Now, as we created all these planes, in each plane, we want to create all these circles or ellipsoids in this case. Um, circles and ellipsoids. Oh, these, these are semi circles. My bad. Uh, as you can see from uh, this one, which is 25, 35, uh, 20 and 30 right so when we're reading this when we're reading this it it, it will begin uh, from the back to the one as you can see the smallest one is can be seen here that is 20 the next one is 30 which is this and then we have 35 and then uh, the last one here is 25 uh, sorry the uh, this is a pretty messy sketch uh, and it's not that clear from this one uh, as i copied it from the book uh, i mean scanned it from the book so you might want to refer to the book to get, get a clear visual of this one. But again, we're, do, we're going to cover it here. Anyway. So let's start with the front plane. Okay. I'm going to create a new sketch here. Okay. And let's go with the center point arc. So for the center point arc, we're, the first arc that will be created is this. And we give it a smart dimension. And the first one, as I mentioned, is 20. Okay, and we're done. That's it. We're just gonna click enter. We're done with that. Okay. Next, we're gonna go into the plane number one. As I mentioned, we've created all the planes in a sequential manner. So the next one we'll do is this one, and we just need to go to the plane number one. Uh, same thing again. And for the smart dimension, uh, this one will have a uh, thirty. And I'm, I'm going to exit the sketch again. The next one is going to have 35. So plane number two, same thing. And we have a smart dimension, uh, 35. Exit the sketch. And the last one is plane number three, the, lot, the bottom one. Uh, we again go to the sketch, center point arc. And we will have this one as a 25, the smallest one. Okay, looks good and dandy. And now if we rotate it, you will see it has been created in different layers and then with all the different size. The next thing we need to do is create this curves itself, okay? Fun part is we don't know where the center of this is, okay? But we do have a solution for that one, okay? So we will go into this top plane because we created everything based on this plane and I'm gonna make it normal, right? And we can see all the edges here. The thing is what, what, what we're gonna do again with the center point arc, but as I said, we don't know where the center of this is. So we're gonna use this one, the second option, which is called the tangent arc, okay. where we know, let's see, where, oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, we're gonna create this three, use a three point arc where we know one of the first point and the second point, but we don't know what the third point is, but we do know what the radius is. Okay, so for the first point, I'm just gonna create everything at random. Okay, just for, just for the sake of it. We don't know what's uh, gonna be the adjustment. So once we create and at the information, which is the radius of this is our 125. So we go into the smart dimension, we select is as 125, 
and it will adjust itself accordingly. And let's see, let's do on this one. I want to buy. We could have mirrored the whole thing also if we created just the uh, center line itself. So, but as I haven't, my mistake. Uh, we need to just add this manually. Okay, that's good. We're gonna exit this sketch. Okay, so the most important part of it has been created. The whole outer design of it. Now we need to create the surface itself. Okay, uh, but before going into that, there are. Two, uh, I'm gonna go back again in the sketch because as you see, I've created two open-ended sketches here. So what I, we're gonna do is close loop this. Okay, so. I'm, We'll be connecting this one and we'll be connecting this one. This will make our life easier in the next step. But even if you haven't done this, it would have been completely fine. How we're gonna go for this part, okay? Let's go into the surface tab and we're gonna select the, this thing called locked surface, okay? Uh, it's the same as uh, the locked uh, solid one, okay? So I'm gonna select the profiles first. Okay, as you see, it's just going linearly and it's not selecting anything. Then we just go to the guide curve and select the guide curve itself. Okay, as it was a closed loop, as you can see, it has selected the whole sketch itself and you can just click OK and it will say, hey, it's invalid because they're intersecting. And the question is why it's going to be, it's intersecting and it's a problem for us. That it's a problem for us because then, because it's also trying to extend this surface here, this surface uh, to this one. So it's it's gonna intersect a lot of things for us. So again, um, the reason I, I said that it's gonna be completely fine if, if we didn't had this, right? Uh, let's go back and we're gonna just remove those sketch, those parts so it's not a closed loop. Now, as we can see, it's not uh, in, in intersection. That means we can easily create our uh, locked surface. So now if we go there again, select the surfaces. Okay. Now for the guide curve, we, we, we need to select this one. Usually by default, this is the part which is selected, but uh, and this is not a closed loop uh with um, the whole arrangement itself so usually what you need to do for the open loops is this select this one okay and as you can see it's only selected one part one side of it uh just click okay now again what i'm going to do again select this box here on the left side property manager and select the second side of it and click okay on the appeared box now it has selected carefully from the both of them and just click okay that's it as you can see, the surface has been created. Any questions so far? No, no, it's not far. Okay, uh, great. So now let's see, as you can see, the, the sides, the ed ends are also closed, right? Uh, we can see only one side from here, but the other side should all also be uh, closed. I'm assuming, I'm assuming. Uh, it might not be closed also. Uh, depending because I'm, as i'm saying it's a blower um, so it, it needs to be opened maybe some ad additional design needs to be added for the moment we're assuming those are closed okay so create a closed one surface what we're going to have to do is again select this plane and create a new sketch okay i'm going to cheat a little here i'm going to select this surface and create convert entities and then I'm going to select this one this one okay so this is the surface we want to close. We could have done the same thing uh, from the bottom one, but it, it, it should be fine, as you can see, because that would have caused us a problem with the uh, lofted surface that we created. Again, if on the last plane, we are creating everything, convert entities, and then we're closing this off, okay? Done. But 
this is only the sketch. So again, we're on the surface, we're gonna select this thing called planar surface, okay? We're gonna select this surface here. We're gonna select the surface here. As you can see, it's, it's only selecting one at a time. So it's a pain, but, but you do it separately and click, okay. So now we have a closed loop path, done. So now let's start working on the handle itself. And the handle is pretty tricky, okay? The tricky because if you notice carefully, this is one part which is smaller and the other part is bigger, right? So we need to create the design based on this specimen, specifics, not specimen, specifics, right? So the first thing, uh, we need to create the smaller version of it, right? So let's start with creating the smaller one. So for the smaller one, we know it's from the center. We it is hundred millimeters away from the from it. But for the other one, we don't know, do we? We know, right? We know that it's gonna stand up till this this surface, right? So we can start from there. So let's first select the right plane itself and go to the features and select the plane okay and let's make it 100 but the thing is it's, it should be on the other side so we're going to select the flip offset and then we have it here so now we have created our new plane so far so good yeah i can see what you did before okay okay awesome awesome now, now that we have this here, uh, we know that um, the center is also on the right plane, okay? And so we'll be using these two planes to our advantage. Um, so for the moment, let me do is, let's hide all the other planes that we don't need. Okay, right click on it and we're gonna select the height plane. So it's not trusted. Okay, I'm gonna select plane number four and create a new sketch and also, uh, on the sketch, I'm going to right click on it and click the normal tool. Okay. So if you, it's in, in the wrong way, you can always select the normal tool again and it will draw, give you the correct angle of it. Okay. So the first thing, it's, it's uh, again, this is pretty messy because of this, all these fillets. Um, but uh, we can see that they, the first part has some angles which has five degrees here. And we know the length of the inner one is 25. And it is from the corner 15 millimeters away. And I can see the height here is 10. Okay. Now let me zoom in and create this. So I'm just gonna make it draw. Uh, like I said, this tool has a distance of 25 and the height is 10 and the angle here is five, uh, five degrees. So five degrees mean with the base, it should be 90 minus five, which is 85. The same goes for this one and 85. Okay, and we're done. This is the first step. Okay, so we have created our main surface. Now, what we are gonna do again, come here, you know, okay, this is 100 millimeters away and distance, we know everything about it. Now let's go into the right plane itself. Okay, and the right plane, I'm gonna create a sketch and again, making it perpendicular, I need to do it twice. Okay. Now we're gonna create the second sketch, which is the outer, outer one itself. Okay, uh, we're making a big assumption here is that um, the surface till up till which it should be extending is the center one and we can just cut away the additional parts of it. Uh, it I might be wrong. Uh, I didn't find, I mean, the information here. So I'm just assuming this do it up till the mid, mid position and then figure it out from that part of it. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to just draw it anyhow I like. And as, as didn't mention any of the other information, we only know that the height of this is um, around, let me see. 
the height of it should be around 17 or 20, sorry, my bad, is 20 here. And then we have here is 50 minus uh, minus 25. Now the distance from here is 25 to 16. It, we have 11. So we and this side of it is a little longer. So it's it's going to be around a rough volume. It is three three point five. Okay. So I'm I'm just going to make this point with respect to this one. I uh, and let, let's make it 3.50. Okay. And those points are already fixed. So here we have is 8.5. Okay, and I mentioned uh, the height is 20, right? So it's gonna be 20 here. Okay, and we're done. Now we have two surfaces that are together. Same thing, we're gonna go into the surface tool, plot the surface, and select sketch number one and sketch number two create this and now we have our handle the only problem now we will be facing is we have this additional surface material right so let me hide this planes first right plane hide plane number four hide and there you go I think I have hidden the surfaces that needs to be there. Okay, cool. So now to remove this, what we're gonna use here, it's called the trim surface. Select that, okay. Select, um, so there are two ways of doing it. You can just do all uh, at uh, two steps where you select one as a tool so that you can cut the surface that is not part of it and then other one, or you can just select the mutual one and select one one of the uh, all the surfaces that you have within that vicinity right and then you just go here and select this option called removes selection and select this one show excluded surfaces we, st we still don't know which surfaces we're removing right so let's go back to this selection option here and we're going to select the surfaces that we want to remove so we want to remove the inner part of it and we also want to remove this surface itself here so these are the surfaces that we're removing right now okay and then click okay so now everything is removed uh was it confusing or do you want me to do, uh, do the steps again i understood it yeah me okay. too Okay, awesome, awesome. So now, instead of doing, uh, okay, let me just show you how, if we had used the standard, what, what would have happened, right? Uh, so I'm just rolling back one step. Uh, trim surfaces, if we have selected standard, we selected this as the tool. Now we need to select which surfaces we need to remove. So now we cannot select this one. We need to click okay, then select this one as a tool and do the other step. That would have a two-step uh, two process with this one. When we selected mutual, we just did it at one go, making our lives easier with that one. Now, the next step is creating this groups here and cut. Um, and they made it all difficult to see just using the fillets. Okay? Uh, uh, let's not talk about it. I guess it, it will be frustrating. So let's uh, go to the top surface and let's make it normal to the surface, okay? I'm just gonna make it visible for my sake and sanity. So I'm just gonna create a new sketch here. And what I'm gonna do is select this bottom surface here and uh, make it convert entities. Select that again, because we'll be using it as a, for a construction now, okay? So now we have some groups which has, as you see, Rx and Ry. That means it's an ellipsoid. We have an x-axis uh, part, where, which is the largest radius, and we have this shortest radius. And we know the centers are 16, 32, and 50 millimeters away. Rx is 15, Ry is 10. So we have all the parameters that we need. So uh, again, we're going to select this ellipse. Um, Let's let's just 
draw something right along the surface so and now use the smart dimension uh, 16 32 50 so from this edge itself center 16 32 and the last one was 50. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, the second one is uh, 12, 7 here, right? So the minor axis and the major axis. 13, 7, right? So 13, oh, my bad, 39, and 9. The last one is 15 and 10. So we have 15, for the minor one, and click okay there you go now again we will be doing something similar to what we did on the previous one the first part is we're going to extrude them okay for this case we're going to do the extrude surface because we don't have any allotted pieces piece to it and we're going to select the sketches oops oh my bad. I think I create. <laughs> I have selected the sketch. Extrude surface, and I'm gonna select the sketches itself. Uh, here on the left property manager, I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna select all the sketches so that we have everything we need. I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. And click OK. There you go. Now. Again, we don't need all the extra part. We just need those groups to be there, right? So again, we're gonna use the trim surface. Select mutual, select all the surfaces we have there. Remove selection, and we're gonna select the surfaces that we're not gonna need. So we're gonna, not gonna need any of this. Then we're not gonna need any of this. As you can see, uh, this is how it will look like. Click OK, and we're done. And now at, we have also, we also need to create this closer loop surface. So again, what we're gonna do is let's hide the plane first. We're gonna go to this feature, reference, plane. And what we're gonna do is select this surface here and this surface here. At least having two is making it a constraint. This is gonna be the, always the third one, but if we select that one, it will make it uh, over constraint because we already know that that's already there. So we're gonna select one of them, two of them at least. On the plane five, create the sketch. Uh, again, uh, what I'm gonna do is select this surface itself and make it convert entities and then just connect connect the line, that's it. Go to the surface, planar surface, it's already automatically selected and click okay. We have closed this, this one here, okay. So far so good. Now we're left with the critical part where, which is this creation of the wheel. And it's, it's, it's gonna be kind of tricky, okay. Now the details are given here. The details are given here. Now, if, uh, what we need to do, we have to create the, the sketch in a way so that we know it is projected in the right, right direction. So what we are seeing here is the exact sketch, but in the surface, it's gonna, when we're drawing it in the surface, it's gonna be pretty tricky. And for that, what we need to do is we're gonna have a projection of the whole thing. Right, so I'm gonna again make um, the top plane, plane visible right and we need to know how far away we need to create our next surface where we create this 
um, create the sketch itself. If you remember the highest radius we had in this whole thing, which was this portion here was 35, right? So let's create our next surface, uh, planar surface with respect to this at 35. That way it will be touching the object at the closest point at the peak of that joint itself. Click okay and you're there. So now, whatever we are going to draw will be on this, but we can easily project it without much error. If we have created it a, a little farther, would it have been okay? Yes, because we are talking about the projection itself. So again, I'm going to make it perpendicular. But before that, any questions? Just making sure. I have one question. So yes. you were you were saying to create a projection. So is it because the like the those the shapes in the drawing are what we're gonna end up with, or is it gonna start to curve once we lay it out on the actual uh, dimension? So on the dimension. So you, what happens in the surface? So uh, as an example, uh, we uh, we can have uh, a different view of a projection depending on how the surface is, right? Uh, let's say on a planar surface, we're drawing, uh, we're drawing something, let's say a, a, a rectangle itself. But when we wrap around a surface itself, because this looks, we're just looking into a projection, but we don't know how it's wrapping around this curved surface itself. So uh, when we do that, we don't know how much material we need to remove. Can we remove it directly by drawing, um, an extension, yes, but will will it be as useful as what we will have? No, because the uh, material amount uh, can we can differ if we're not doing the projection itself to remove the pieces that we don't need versus what the pieces we need. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, the last part of it. Uh, so again, my favorite center line, I'm going to create the center line. And we already know it's, these are the centers on one side. And this is the cross section of it where the other one is right here, somewhere around here. Uh, but it's also given to us as 119. So we're going to use that information. So uh, let's draw it. Okay, you can see. Smart dimension from here till this point is 119. Ooh, I drew it pretty close. <laughs> Almost. Okay, that makes sense. Now let's look into this messy one. Right, we're gonna draw another ellipsoid here, which will be basically with respect to this. Did it select the right point? No, I didn't. We needed this cross section. We have something say, like this, right? On the on the exact surface. Now for this one, we have the major and the minor is 30, 35, and this is 60. Okay. Is it? Oh no, that's the inner one on the surface. Okay, I guess we're missing some information here. Uh, let me check the book I have here. Just a sec. Sorry, uh, I will include that on the on the other piece. No problem. Yeah, sometimes uh, the book has some additional information later on instead of having it on the first page itself. Okay, found it. So it's 60 and 35. Okay. So the major part is 60. And the minor part is 35. There you go. And we should be fine with this. So now we have 
exited the sketch and what we're going to do is go to the features uh, if you have it extended you will see something called here is the called the curves okay you go there you will mm, sorry for that if you go there on the curves okay it was sometimes it's frustrating so i'm going to bring it somewhere along this line okay you can see the sketches still right yeah we can okay awesome so curves project curve now we first we need to select the sketch the second thing we need to do is select the surfaces where you want it, want it to be projected okay click okay and now it has been projected there and we know the how much material or other things we need to remove from there so this the surface you're seeing right now is the material amount you need to remove from it okay pretty pretty straightforward forward there now as for the height of this basis uh, what we're going to do again we're going to select this plane go to reference and we're going to make a uh, a six millimeter, but on the other side of it to cut away that that piece of it. Okay, and click OK. Uh, which is again I need to have we need to have it in the book. Uh, I'm just gonna go from the book here. Uh, and I'll be hiding the top one again. Apologies, I didn't realize that the book had the additional information on the second one. Um, let's go into the sketch on the plane seven. And let's make it there. Okay. We can always use some information from the previous sketches, which is uh, let's make it visible. And we can just use the construction lines we had there. So I'm just converting them, selecting them, and making it uh, with for construction. Okay. Now we can hide the original sketch. Okay. Now we have that information. And now again, with the same thing. Okay, oops. And this information uh, for this one we have is 50. And this one we have S27. all this we're creating it because we needed to create this group where the air vent will be there okay so now we already know that okay we have two surfaces there one is the one we created on the top another one is what we had here and we just need to remove that piece of it before that let's go into the surface uh we're going to do this a lofted surface again uh, select the sketch that we created from the projection and sketch we created just now okay and click okay that's it uh we have the thing all the thing we needed now we just need to remove this surface let's go into the trim surface select the surface that you just created and for the uh, let's go into the standard mode and remove the selection is basically this part of it click okay and now you have that group there right and to create this other part, you can always have is create a plane there, um, similar to what you did there. Otherwise, let's see, um, it, should, it, it should work right away. If you select this closed loop sketch, yeah. And click OK. So you don't need to create a sketch in this case because it was already in the same plane. And there you go. You have the basic design that you needed for, for this one. Now, the last part of it is creating those vents which will be based on this structure itself. Uh, do you want me to show uh, how to create those vents also? It's basically gonna be creating a sketch on this planar surface. We will extrude it, and then we will be trimming the surfaces that we don't need. Basically, all the extension from upper and down, and every, everything except for this plane will be removed from using the mutual uh, surface remove. Um, I don't know, Brian, do you want in the show or yeah okay okay so let's make it again normal right 
And I'm gonna create a surface here. I mean, create a sketch here right away. Uh, let's go with the construction line first. So we can use the previous information. Oh, let's use the previous information, why not? We have that. So let's make it visible. So we know already this is what we had. By the way, do we need this based on the sketch? We don't, but we can always use something for us ourselves, right? So let's go into this and convert entities. Did it convert it? Let's hide this. Okay, no, it didn't. Again, let's make it show. Select this, convert entities. I'm gonna hide this again. And this is a solid line. So what we're gonna do is for construction. So now we're ready. So uh, one of the height is 38, another is 22, and the width uh, needs to be calculated a little. There is, should be some information there, which is 40, 35. Okay, got it. So. Let's create the slots first. I'm gonna create this one. Use this one. Uh, and again, a second one. We don't know any of the information for this one. But what we can see here, the one from the another is four millimeters away from one edge to another one. So that means if we have a center line in between, that's gonna be two, right? So from this to this, it's two. Okay, great. Then we have this thickness as three millimeters. So we all, we know that this thickness is given as three. I'm assuming the other one is gonna be the same, but they might have something we don't know. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, between these two, we have a gap of 2.5. So we have a gap of 2.5. And the last one is also three, basically. So three. Now let's look into the heights. The heights are 22 and 38. So this is 22. And this is 38. Okay, now quick question. You see the, in here, it's already on the edge, but it's not all along the edge. Is it problem with the dimensions or is something hidden there? If you notice carefully here, they have also something uh, of a fillet here. So once you add that, those fillets, it will be along that line. Okay, and I don't see any information about the fillet given here. And let's see not on the book all either. It only gives you information for one of them, which is one millimeter down here. And this one as R4, a radius of four. So let's keep it as is. Um, mirror entities, we're gonna select this and this entity. And for the mirror about is this, click okay. Now we have the sketch ready. We go into the surface, extrude surface. As, this, as the plane was already selected, I mean, the sketch was already selected, what we're gonna do is make it mid plane. Click okay. Now we have the surface. Now guys, tell me if, uh, what will be the way of doing it where if you wanna keep only this surface, but remove anything other than that. We have already shown you, right? How is it the uh, trim surface? Yes. Then, and then you select whatever you don't want, or yes. you're having yes. to talk to so you, you, you need to select this first, mutual, right? So that we're, you're selecting all the necessary surfaces. Like here, these are the surfaces, and these are the surfaces that are in contact with one another, right? Now, you need to re remove the surfaces that you don't need. Here. So select this. We don't need anything inside. As you can see, they have been removed. We don't need this. 
we don't need this. Okay, so the field is left, click OK. Uh, surprisingly, it didn't delete it yet. Let's see what happened here. Edit features, remove them. Okay, show the excluded surfaces. Okay, maybe a bug on the SOLIDWORKS because as you can see, it is showing what are the surfaces that will be removed, right? And that's not removed. Okay, anyways, click OK. Uh, uh, most likely we need to do it again. Again, go to the trim surface. Let's go to the standard one. We are using this as the surface. Remove the selection, which is this, and click OK. Another one again, trim surface. Okay. This glitch has made our life a little tougher when we wanted to remove a surface. Is that it? Yes. Um, maybe I didn't hear it, but the difference between the standard and mutual is what? The difference? Oh, okay, okay. So let's talk about that one. Yeah, mutual and that one. So let's say if you go into the trim surface and the standard is basically you, you if you have two different surfaces, you use one as a tool. Okay, so basically you're using this as a two, re reference. Let's see if I'm selecting this surface, you're using that as the reference. And then whichever unrelated or, or co uncorrelated, which is not part of the original surfaces, then you can just go into the second box itself and select those surfaces that you need to remove. That's it. So basically if I'm just selecting uh, these surfaces, which is not part of it, which it seems like it is part of it right now, we need to do some other measures to remove that one. But the mutual one is basically you have, um, you, have uh, you, you, you don't have any reservations. You're basically selecting everything you have on your hand as, uh, as uh, all the connected surfaces like this, okay? Now, next thing you have is you can either select which surfaces to keep or which surfaces to remove. Let's say if you're selecting that, okay, out of the mutual ones, these are the ones I don't want them. Among all the selected ones, and then click OK, it should remove. As I said, there is some bug going on for here, which for which it's saying that it cannot be trimmed, and which should have been done on the first try we did. Okay, uh, but that's how it should go. Okay, and once you have this, once you have this, uh, I guess the only things that we haven't added to the whole loop is the fillets itself. So on the surface, if you go to the fillet, like on this one, the tip is four. So let's make it four first and select the surfaces. Uh, here we have here, these things are four. Come on. It's not even letting you select the surface. See. Okay. This is pretty weird behavior of SOLIDWORKS. So this is the surface we want, we want to create. Okay, laminar edge cannot be filled. So most likely the dimension is a problem. Let's see, two is working, nope. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know what happened. What happened here? Okay. So, if you remember, um, these two surfaces are pretty different, right? From one another. This is the one we created. This is not part of the same thing. So, in that case, if you need to make uh, them one singular surface, what you need to use is knit surface. Select that. Select the first surface. Select the second surface. Third surface. So, the, these are unrelated surfaces. These are not part of the same thing. And if you click OK, now you have one joint surfaces. Now the fillet should work. As you see, now it's working. Okay, previously it was not because th those were two un uh, uncorrelated surfaces that you had, and that's why it was not working at all. Okay, so I'm just creating the fillet, and based on the information other you have, you can just create. The other fillets, let's say if you go here, I don't know what the fillet size of this one is. Let's, let's keep it around four, maybe the same somewhere around here. These are just filled spaces based on what you need and what the direction is 
other than that, here is your final product. Okay. Um, once you're done, let's say if you want to add some thickness to it, you can always call this thicken or um, and just create it as, uh, as a plastic product or anything else. But right now, whatever you're seeing here, it doesn't have any thickness to it. Okay. So let's say if you've created anything using a surface tool and then wanted to 3D print it, it will not print anything for you because that's, that's only a surface with zero thickness. So this is basically a virtual design that you create. Just add the thickness and you should be fine to go from that point on. Okay, so that being said, okay, uh, this one example took a long time, but that covered most of the tools that you'll be using if you're using uh, the surface tools. Uh, the first time I learned about surface tool is when uh, there was an assignment from one of my work, um, I guess it was 2014 after I graduated from my undergrads, uh, is creating a door design. Okay, the door of a car, uh, one surface, the client wanted some things from their original design to be changed. And that's when I, uh, I was using the solid at the first, but then they mentioned, no, we need everything but as a uh, surface because that needs to be changed. And sometimes you might create, need to create a mold itself. So created that, that part, that outer surface based on their design and other specification. And then uh, before giving it to them, I just added the thickness, that's it. It's straightforward. So visualization straight surface where you don't want to add a lot of details on the inside but only on the surface part you work with this kind of things even uh, creating molds this is one of the ways to go okay so there are a total of four examples um, here every, everything is basic for this one you can always use um, the same thing i used which is um, the lofted surface creating it by different layers or what you can do is create the outer layer itself and just do a revolve surface for 180 degrees. So you'll have the basic design and just create the rest of them using the tools that we have used. Okay, same thing. Uh, this is also a straightforward one. This might be a little tricky, but this is also easy. Just create it by different uh, layers. Okay, I mean, by different layers, I mean different um, planes. Any question? No, no. Okay, awesome. Uh, so with that, let us finish uh, today's session. Okay, I'm really stopping the recording at this point. And also, uh, 